Welcome to More Than a Budget, a podcast presented by Relational Media. Co-founders Jeff Fine Thomas, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and John Mitchell, a certified financial planner, combine the fields of psychology and personal finance to help couples improve their relationships and discover what is more important than money. Hi, I'm John. And I'm Jeff. And today we're going to be talking about some rough spots. Um, you know, life is not totally linear. It's not smooth. There's some weeks, some years are better than others. And I'm kind of thinking about some of the financial stress that we all find ourselves in. Sometimes it's not a one-off. Sometimes it's like a train. It just keeps coming and coming Mm -hmm. and coming. And we wonder when, when's it going to end? Um, You know, I think of some of the stuff gets kicked off by things like, you know, job losses or medical expenses or, you know, Sometimes it can be a big unexpected cost, like a, a, a big car repair or a car replacement. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are dealing with inflation right now, having kind of added a whole new layer of complexity and expense. Um, oddly enough, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but sometimes rough patches can come from a windfall. We've yeah, talked about where you get money, where you get money, um, and it becomes disruptive. Now, that's of all the problems to have. We all would agree that's a better one than, than the first list, <laughs> Losing right? Losing your job. Yeah. But um, we have all heard the stories of, you know, people that their situation changed for the better and found themselves divorced a couple of years later. Mm-hmm. And we're all going, how did that happen? How did that happen? Yeah. So, so we're going to talk a little bit today about some of the financial rough spots and how they kind of, how to deal with them when they come in groups. And Jeff? Yeah, I mean... You know, one of the things that happens routinely is that couples have spots in their relationship where they have a persistent argument. They just don't get to resolution on the argument. It's extremely common. Maybe you've had that experience before if you're listening. And so, you know, I think we all have to pay attention to the reality that there are certain things that occur in our relationship that sometimes are not solvable and we have to work around them. It's important to say, okay, just because I can't solve this doesn't mean that the relationship is bad or over or I should divorce my partner or whatever it means. Like, what you know, we're committed here. Like, how are we going to solve the, the unsolvable? How are we going to work around the thing that that is problematic? Mm-hmm. So whether we're talking about um, financial rough spots that are somewhat persistent or relational rough spots, there's probably also some carryover for both of these when they're, when they're both happening, right? Oh my gosh, for sure. I mean, any external problem like losing your job or having a big medical problem that you have to pay, you know, a bunch of pills, bills for it's, it's really hard on a relationship. It creates stress and disconnection sometimes agitation, you know, um, concern or worry, all kinds of emotional experience could be impacting your relationship. So if, you know, if, if there's a sense of pressure on the relationship, whether that's from the inside or the outside, that definitely has an impact on the relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm also kind of thinking about this thing. We've talked about it a little bit before, and that is this idea that, you know, when I was young, I probably developed some coping mechanisms that, you know, when life was hard, um, I got a bowl of ice cream or when life Mm -hmm. was hard, I went and I bought something or when life was hard, I had some sort of a reaction, right? Yeah. And as I got older, I got smarter, maybe, right? <laughs> and I realized that, you know, maybe the bowl of ice cream doesn't solve my problems yeah. or doesn't, or creates other ones that I'm not really willing to, right. you know, put up with. Um, but I'm wondering when we find ourselves in these periods of stress, financial or relational stress that are kind of elongated and they're kind of testing us, if sometimes these old coping mechanisms that weren't all that helpful in the first place, don't suddenly pop up. No doubt. You know, when when you're under a lot of stress, especially you see people reverting to their previous ways of coping that are not so helpful. When When the cost of the way of coping is more than the benefit of that way of coping, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And often, you know, those ways of coping, as you point out, are born early in our earlier in our lives. And we just automatically do them without Mm -hmm. even thinking about it. We Mm -hmm. just get put under pressure. And then suddenly we find ourselves doing stuff that we, we know intellectually that we shouldn't be doing. 
So it's extremely common for people to regress into some earlier way of doing some less helpful way of doing something when they find themselves under stress. Yeah. And when life is good, you can kind of manage that, right? You go, Oh no, things are going great. And I beat that. That's not going to be, you know, that was, that was old and immature or young and immature. And I don't do that anymore, but you find yourself under enough stress pulling some interesting levers. Yeah. So, um, I also find that when people get under financial stress, they sometimes find themselves in a position of wanting to blame their partner. Even if it has absolutely nothing to do with their partner. Yeah. And this is so hard. I mean, if you've ever been on the receiving end of that, where maybe you see your partner super stressed and suddenly you get blamed for something you didn't do or weren't even present for or whatever, it's so painful to have that moment and, and try to have some kind of empathy while you're being accused of something you didn't do. And, you know, it's super tempting, I think, to want to find someone that's responsible for the pain you're feeling, the stress you're mm-hmm. feeling. And oftentimes it's really weird, but it's oftentimes like your partner is the safest person to be pointing that finger at, you know? I just need to yell at somebody. Yes. And of course we don't, that's not a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) Don't yell at your partner because you you don't know what to do with your anger or your pain or your sadness Mm -hmm. or whatever it is. It's really important to say, use your words. I feel angry and I'm tempted to you know, express that anger towards you rather than actually expressing it toward them. Right. So let's start with a given. I think everybody needs to hear this or hear this again, is that we are not entitled to a smooth ride. Everybody is going to go through not just events, but periods of multiple events where things are just really hard. And I don't care who you're watching. If if you say, well, my friends never go through this. Mm. Um, that's not true. Yeah. Everybody goes through it. And I think part of the question that we want to ask is we're getting into the idea of, well, what can we do about this? Number one is recognizing that this is, you're either having this now or you're going to have it later. It's going to happen. And knowing that that's kind of part of part and parcel of, of this life that we live as humans I think tells us that we need to be prepared for financial stress um, when, when our plans get blown up and we need to be prepared for things happening in our relationship that we're going to have to kind of buckle down and work on. And the first thing that I want to say is, is that we need to accept that that's part of the deal and that we're the ones who have to fix it. I think it's really, you're spot on of course, but I think it's really an important thing that you're saying because for a lot of people, the natural tendency when faced with something that's very stressful or disturbing or upsetting is to find a way to skirt the pain of it. Mm -hmm. That's a natural human phenomenon. Right. And so you're advocating for identifying the pain spot look at it squarely in the eyes and say, I see that this is painful and, and then trying to figure out what it is that we want to do to solve that problem. Even though naturally most people, you know, really are going to struggle to get to that spot. It's important to, to work towards it. Yeah. And to do it together to, you know, identify that, Hey, we are, this is one of those times, this is a season and we need to know that this isn't going to get, just this isn't going to miraculously disappear. So let's get shoulder to shoulder and let's start doing um, the things that we need to do yeah. to identify it. I, I, and to that point, you know, I think it's really important for us to, when we're under this kind of stress, to get back to our common values. You know, we say this over and over and over again because it's so important in our work, your mm-hmm. work and my work, that, you know, we're we're saying that common values help to guide couples through the difficulties of life as well as the joys of life. Mm -hmm. And so when the stress comes, you know, it's important to, you know, create a situation where you're recognizing you're working as a team. I think another thing that we need to continue to do under stress is to stay really curious about your partner's emotional experience 
you know, we kind of want to know why do they do what they do and, and how they feel is a big part of that. Of course, you need, you need to know their history and what, you know, how they dealt with problems across their life and so on. But stay open to the reasons why your partner is doing what they're doing. So if you see them stressing out, if they, you see them blaming you, if you see them, you know, curling up in a fetal position or whatever it is, you know, uh, ask yourself, hey, how can I learn more about this? What, what's the thing to do right now that I could be learning about what's happening inside them? Yeah, and this gets to the idea of supporting each other is during these these difficult times, there's moments where you're like, okay, I can do that. We can do this. You know, yeah, we're going to get through. And then there's moments where you're like, I don't know how we're going to get through this. Yeah. And maybe you and your partner are taking turns, right? Uh, my wife and I have said, okay, look, we can't both be in the ditch at the same time. Right, right. <laughs> you know, one of us has to be the be the adult and, right. and move, help us move forward. Yeah. But that also means that um, one of us is the caregiver and one of us is the one in need. Receiver, right. Receiver. And we take turns supporting each other so that we can keep moving forward through those challenges. Yeah. I think another thought about this is, you know, it's very important to own your part in problems, whether they're, whether you're reacting to an external problem and, and your reaction is a part of the problem or, 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 or if you're just, you know, causing the problem directly, it's really important to have some time to reflect on your participation in creating problems in the moment. Mm-hmm. It's really easy when you're under stress to imagine that someone else is causing that Mm -hmm. and that, you know, I'm not. Right. So, you know, take some time and open up, you know, you're, you're going to see that you cause some problems too, or at least parts of them. Yeah. And remember that this isn't something that's happening to you or something that's happening to your spouse. It's something that's happening to both of you. Yeah, that's right. If your partner's, and it's happening to one of you, it's happening to both of you. I like that a lot. Another thing I think we should consider is, you know, it's very important for all of us when we're under stress to find ways to try to counteract that. Mm-hmm. And that might be as simple as spending time together, going on a date if that's possible, um, you know, having conversations, doing things that you enjoy together. Mm-hmm. But it's also things like, you know, oh, we need to sit down and talk about a hard thing and how we're going to solve this hard thing together. Lots of couples have different ways, you know, that are idiosyncratic to them mm-hmm. for how they want to deal with problems. And one of them, I think, should be do something that counteracts the stress, whether that's having fun or, you know, doing direct problem solving. Yeah. I mean, even simple stuff like, you know, going for a walk, we don't have money for date night. We can go for a walk. We can go to a park and we can go for a walk and we can take turns communicating about what was good about the day. What was, what were the challenges? I mean, you can constantly find opportunities to connect um, and to strengthen each other as, as you're going through this challenge. Yeah. I think the last one I have in mind about, this is make sure that you're asking your partner for what you need it, and pay attention, you know, because just because you ask for something doesn't mean your partner is able to give that. It's not, it, it's not that the request creates a demand. Sure. Um, but also it's important to say directly, Hey, I'm struggling with this thing. I just really need to do X, Y, and Z. You know, I need to go out and have a walk. Would you come with me? Or, mm-hmm. Um, you know, I need to go see my friends or I need to, you know, can we put some music on? I don't know, whatever it is, you know, we're talking about superficial things, but, um, whatever it is, I think it's really important to say directly. And then for your partner to be listening for those direct requests and to the extent they're able to be giving as much as you can, you know, if you're seeing your partner stressing and, you think it's your job to be of help to them, which I hope you do. Mm -hmm. Um, Then it's important to take those requests seriously in the moment that they're given. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to end with this one idea. And that is that you talked about avoidance earlier. I mean, how much, how long do we want to be under financial stress? 
Yeah, never. I mean, how long do we want to be in a relational funk? As short as possible. So the more that we avoid and circle and blame, the longer we're going to spend in this place we don't like. Yeah. So the quicker we come together, put shoulder to shoulder, identify this thing, and you know, figure out a way that we're going to start pushing against it, is just that much faster that we get to the other side and to the lightness that, that can come from overcoming something. So work together, lean on each other, but face the problem and, and work it. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave us a like, comment, or review. And tell your friends. New episodes drop weekly. Learn more about Jeff and John at relational-media.com. 